This is a short series on weight painting, specifically weight painting as it relates to armatures and rigging, or in other words, uh, setting and painting bone weights. But here on CG Dive I like to go a little bit more in depth in general. To understand weight painting, you first have to understand vertex groups. So this first part is going to be very basic, maybe too basic for some of you. We're going to go over vertex groups and a little bit about weight paint mode. Then in the next part I'll give you an overview of the tools and options in weight paint mode and then we can move into actually painting bone weights. And since I have a series about Rigify, at the end I'll also explain how to paint weights for your characters that are rigged with Rigify. If you want to follow along, you can download this scene that I'm starting from. The link will be in the description. The scene is simple. We have a character, a rig as well, that is not parented to the, to the character yet. And I also have a rigify rig, which uh, we'll use for the rigify section. So what are vertex groups? Vertex groups are a way to limit the effect of some blender functions to only a part of your mesh. They have many, many applications. For example, we can make the Displace modifier only deform the leg of this character. We can make this character emit particles, but only from its hands, not from the whole body. And of course, when rigging a character, we can define the area of influence of each bone. So the shin bone only affects the shin area, and the thigh bones only affects the vertices in the thigh. So let's try to create a vertex group. Select the character, the mesh, and go to Object Data Properties. And you'll find the vertex groups area. It should be at the top if you haven't moved these fields around. If you click this plus icon, you can create a vertex group. So let's create three of them by clicking this plus button three times. And I'm going to rename these groups a little bit. The first one will be Group A, Group B, and Group C. These groups are still empty, so we can't really use them yet. We need to add vertices to them. There are two main ways uh, to do that. One is through weight painting, and the other is to manually assign them in edit mode. Okay, if I click uh, on group A, I'll highlight it, and that means that it is active, and that means that I'm working on this group. Let's switch to edit mode. And by the way, if the end panel is not open, open it and switch to item. This will be important in a second. When we switch to edit mode, this uh, field changed a little bit. Uh, there are a couple of buttons and this weight slider, which I can slide from zero to one. So let's keep it to one and select one vertex at random. I'm actually going to press slash to isolate the mesh. And I'm going to select one vertex, for example, this one on the, on the knee. With the weight slider to one, uh, I'm going to click assign. Then I'm going to select another vertex. Uh, just avoid selecting a vertex that is right next to this, this first one. So I'm going to select this one, set the weight to 0.5 and click assign. And then select another vertex that is not connected to the previous one, weight to 0.2 and click assign. Okay, now we can switch to weight paint mode. You'll probably notice that the vertices where we did something, where we edit uh, weights, are colored differently than the rest of the mesh. The whole mesh is kind of blue. So weight paint mode allows us to see the influence of the vertex group over the mesh. Now let's quickly set up the viewport for best visibility. My mesh in object mode appear appears blue and that is because I have set up a custom viewport display color for it. When we go to weight paint mode, uh, weight paint mode overlays a color gradient over your mesh that goes from, from blue, a blue means no influence, to all the way to red, which means full influence or weight of one. So it is best to have your mesh completely white, the default color of your mesh completely white, so that you can see the weight overlay as clearly as possible. The settings I recommend is to keep the shading to solid, you know, do not use material preview because that will, if you have textures on your uh, mesh, uh, they'll be shown in the viewport and that will confuse you when you try to paint weights. And then if you have custom color for your viewport display like I have, you can go over here on, on the additional shading options and either switch to object or single and that will give you a white color for your mesh. 
Speaking of viewport options, there are a couple of additional, if I switch to weight paint mode, there are a couple of additional uh, weight paint options over here for the overlays, but I find the defaults uh, work perfectly and I never really touch them. So now I can more clearly see the weights that I set a minute ago. The vertex where we set a uh, weight of one uh, is really red color now. The one where we set uh, a weight of zero, 0 0.5 is kind of green. And uh, here we set a weight of 0 0.2 and it's it may be a little bit hard to see, but it, it has become this light blue color. So weight paint mode gives you a visual representation of your weights. And it also allows you to paint the vertex weights in a way that is more visual and artistic. So instead of selecting vertices and clicking assign, I can just drag my mouse over the mesh and I'll be painting my weights. I'll explain weight paint mode later. Uh, so for now, just ignore this. I'm going to press Control Z to undo uh, the, the weight paint. Okay, let's go back to edit mode, switch to object data properties, and uh, let's look at the other buttons that we have over here. If I select these two vertices where I know that I have um, vertex weights assigned and simply click remove, then they'll be removed from my group. And if we go to weight paint mo mode, we can visualize that they're, they have been removed. Now, the remove button doesn't care about this weight slider. It will simply completely remove any vertex from your group. Now, let's undo until I have my uh, weights back. Now, I'm going to click in the 3D view to deselect everything. And then I'm going to click this select button. And as you can see, all of the vertices where we assigned uh, weights uh, have been selected. Okay, so now I'm going to press A to select the whole mesh and then I'm going to press deselect. And again, these vertices where we assigned weights were deselected this time. So these select and deselect buttons simply select or deselect all of the vertices that are included in this group, which is highlighted. And again, the weight slider doesn't have anything to do with deselection. Uh, even if your vertex uh, has a vertex weight of 0 0.001, the select uh, function will still select it. And this can be very useful when you manually tweak your weights in edit mode. Okay, what else? Uh, we have these arrows here. If I click them, I can reorder, I can change the order of my groups, which can be useful sometimes, but I, I rarely use it. This little triangle, uh, you may have seen it in other parts of uh, Blender. Uh, we also used it uh, when we were working with Rigify. It shows a search field, and this allows me to filter this list of groups. So for example, if I type underscore A, then only my group A will be visible. And that can be very useful when I have a, a lot of groups. And finally, there is this drop down menu. Now, most of the options that you'll see here are quite advanced or they require more of a context to be explained. So I'm not going to go into detail here. Maybe uh, we'll have more advanced tutorial where I, I explain them, but um, the one function that you may want to take a look at is this delete all groups. Sometimes you just want to get rid of all of your groups and then you can click this function and all groups will be gone. Now I'm going to press control Z to undo. Which didn't work, that's interesting. <laughs> oh, there we go. I went to object mode and then I press control Z and then I got my uh, groups back. That was interesting. I'm not sure if that's a bug or... Hmm. Anyway, um, earlier I asked you to expand the end panel and switch to item. And uh, the reason for that is when I select one of these vertices that has weight assigned, I'll get this vertex weights field. Now let's, if I click another vertex that has nothing, no, no weights, then this field will disappear. Let's see what we have here. First, there's this, these buttons that say all, deform and other. This lets you filter out only your um, only your weights that have to do with bones. So if you click the deform option, it will only show weights that have to do with bones. And if you click other, it will show uh, weights that don't have to do with bones. And if you click all, then it will show all groups. And right now we only have one group assigned to this vertex, but um, uh, we can have more more than one, and I'll show that in a second. Uh, below it, uh, we have the group 
which uh, to which this um, vertex belongs and the weight. So currently it is one and I can tweak this value right here in this area. And if I click in it and uh, then I can set a very, very precise value. So if I want this uh, value to be 0 0.6275, I can do that. So here you can set very precise values. Uh, same, same over here actually with the assign button. Uh, whereas weight paint mode is less precise, but it's more artistic and visual and fast. Okay, there's this X button. If I click it, this uh, vertex will be removed from this group. So that is uh, the same as clicking remove over here. I'm going to click it and then uh, control Z to undo. This paste icon and the copy button can transfer weights from the active vertex to all selected to all selected ones. This one should be explained in context, so let's skip it for now. And also, I rarely use it when painting bone weights. And finally, there's this normalize function. I think this is very important to understand, so I, I'm going to try to explain it as best as I can. This is the main reason why I created the, all of these three groups. So let's select one different vertex at random and set the weight to one and click assign to group A. Then I'm going to highlight group B and again click assign with weight to one and group C again assign. And as you can see here in the end panel, all of the groups to which this vertex belongs are shown now. And now that we have more than one group, I can also click these buttons here, group A, group B, group C, and that will select the uh, group over here in the vertex groups. So now we have a value of one for each of these groups. So this vertex fully belongs to group A, group B, and group C. And that is not a problem in general. As I said, uh, vertex groups have many applications. So for example, we may want group A to control the influence of, of the displace modifier. We may want group B to control the influence of particles. And group C can be used for soft body simulation. However, when we paint bone weights, we generally don't want to have this situation where a vertex belongs to many groups, to more than one group, and the sum of these values is not one. This will make more sense later when we actually paint weights for bones. But for now, just understand that you can click this normalize button and that will normalize the values of these groups. What that means is that based on their initial not normalized values, it will assign new values, the sum of which, which are exactly one. So in this case, all values of our three groups was one. So the normalized values are 0.333 for each of those. And the sum of that will be exactly one. If you have a value of 0.5 for group A, 0 0.5 for group B and 1 for group C, then when we normalize, we'll get these, we'll get this kind of normalized values. I think you see how this works. The normalized function will tweak these values proportionally and the, it will make it so that their sum equals exactly 1. Okay, I already said that um, vertex groups can be used for many things. So let's give a an example. I'm going to press A and select the whole character and then select group A and remove all vertices. Also remove them from B and from C. Now for, for group A, um, let's enable X-ray mode and just select the vertices of the of one leg and click assign. For group B, let's just select the, the hands and click assign. And that will be enough. Okay, for, uh, for the modifiers, first I'm going to add a subdivision surface and then on top of it, uh, let's add a displace modifier. Now, as you can see, that just inflates the whole mesh. Uh, I'm going to reduce the strength a bit. And then for, for vertex group, I'm going to uh, select group A. And as you can see, that limits the effect of the displace modifier to only the leg. Let's reduce the influence a little bit more. Now, if I go to edit mode, 
I can select a little bit more of these vertices, go to data object data properties, set the value to, let's say, 0.5, click assign, and let's go back to object mode. And these vertices were also added to the displace modifier, but they have less influence. I think it's, it will be e even easier to see if we enable these, these, displace op these display options over here. Let's go back to edit mode again, select some more vertices, go to object data properties, set this to two, 0 0.25 and click assign. Oh yeah, I have to select group A. Okay, over here, I'm going to select some of these vertices, way to 0 0.5 and click assign. Now, if I go to weight paint mode, I can see my weights. And if I start painting, uh, maybe if I remove the overlays, it will be easily visible. As soon as I paint vertex weights for group A, uh, the displace modifier will start to dis to to affect this area. Okay. Now let's remove these modifiers. Uh, we don't need them. They're, we're just here for a quick demonstration. Let's go to the particles tab, uh, create a new particle system, and press play, and you'll see particles coming from the whole character. For viewport display, I'm going to reduce their size a little bit. And then on the vertex groups, density, I'm going to choose group B, which was hands. By mistake, I selected some of these, some of these vertices, or so they were added to group B. But uh, I think you can see how this particle system is controlled by the vertex group. So those are two quick examples of how we can uh, use vertex groups for stuff that is not bone weights. But anyway, let's move on. In the next part, we're going to go over the weight paint mode, all of its tools and options, and then we can start painting some bone weights. Thanks, I hope you learned something. And uh, if you like this video, please click like and subscribe. That helps a lot.